Welcome to the Build Your Own Rain Barrel instructional video. This video will take you through a short presentation on the benefits of harvesting rainwater and then go through the step-by-step -step instructions for constructing your very own rain barrel. This video was prepared by the Coastal Soil and Water Conservation District in partnership with Georgia's Coastal Management Program through the funding source seen here. One option for building your own rain barrel would be to attend a Build Your Own Rain Barrel workshop hosted by Georgia's Coastal Management Program and the Sapelo Island National Estuarine Research Reserve Coastal Training Program. At the workshop, we utilize 35-gallon recycled syrup drums donated by Coca-Cola and provide you with all of the parts to turn them into a rain barrel. Visit these websites for upcoming workshop dates and registration information. The idea of capturing rainwater in larger cisterns is generations old. Landowners have used cisterns as a way to collect water for watering farmland, washing clothes, and even drinking. And rainwater is still a primary source of clean water for many parts of the world with limited freshwater resources. A rain barrel is a similar system that collects and stores rainwater from your roof that would otherwise be diverted into storm drains in your street. Rain barrel water is not typically treated to be safe for indoor water use or for drinking water, but is a great alternative to using or drinking water sources for watering outdoor plants. Rain barrels have many benefits. They are a great way to do your part in conserving water. The average U.S. household uses 146,000 gallons of water per year, with up to 50% of that water going towards outdoor irrigation during the summer months. We should be conserving our treated drinking water for those things we really need it for, and use more rainwater for our outdoor water uses. A 35-gallon rain barrel can save most homeowners over 1,000 gallons of water each year. A second benefit in using a rain barrel is you can reduce the stormwater runoff from your property. Stormwater runoff is the number one cause of pollution in our streams today. This image illustrates how water flows from a site in its naturally vegetated state on the left compared to a more developed site on the right. On a natural site, there is very little surface runoff as more water is allowed to infiltrate or trickle down through the ground into the water table or in some areas back into our groundwater. When a site is developed, much of the surface is replaced with impervious surfaces such as rooftops, driveways, parking lots, and even turf grass. These surfaces do not allow water to infiltrate or trickle through them, but instead water will run off the surface and typically be diverted away from homes and structures. Notice how much larger the surface runoff arrow is on the developed site and how much less water is recharging the water table below. This causes alterations to the natural hydrologic cycle as water is being diverted away from the site where the rain originally falls. So where does all of that water go? In developed areas, stormwater is traditionally diverted to a nearby drainage ditch or along curbs and gutters in your neighborhood that leads to a storm drain as seen here. What many people don't realize is that the water that enters these storm drains is not treated. It does not go to a wastewater treatment plant. Instead, it is usually diverted to a lagoon or stormwater pond where the water remains still and allows some of the larger sediment and dirt particles to settle out before overflowing to a nearby coastal stream or river, which eventually drains into our estuaries and oceans. The problem with this is that stormwater runoff picks up any pollutants along the way, including fertilizers, chemicals, pet waste, motor oil, sediment, and other contaminants. Notice the amount of sediment exiting the stormwater pipe in the bottom right picture. This water is also very warm as it flows over hot asphalt and concrete, especially in the summer months. And all of this water eventually enters our fragile ecosystems, especially our coastal estuaries, which are our most productive areas for coastal fisheries and recreation. The influx of additional fresh water, as well as the pollutants in warmer temperatures, are causing major problems in these sensitive areas. So you may be wondering how having one little rain barrel will make a difference. If you are able to capture over 1,000 gallons of rainwater a year with each 35-gallon rain barrel, that is also keeping over 1,000 gallons of water from becoming stormwater runoff leaving your property. You can instead use the water on plants and other vegetated areas, allowing the water to remain on site. If everyone in a community installed one small rain barrel, the cumulative impacts would be quite large. You can also save money by using a rain barrel. We are fortunate to live in an area with relatively low water costs, but that could change with increased seasonal droughts and changes to our water supply in the future. Even if you have a well on your property, you're paying for the electricity to pump that water out of the ground. Take advantage of a free water source and reuse rainwater instead. Your plants also prefer rainwater to the treated water that comes from your city or county water treatment plant. Rainwater has a more neutral pH and temperature, 
and is free of added minerals and chemicals that may affect your plants. Make your plants happy by watering them with rainwater. There is a huge potential to harvest rainwater in coastal Georgia. If you were able to collect every drop that fell onto a 1,000 square foot rooftop area, based on our average annual rainfall amounts, you could collect almost 31,000 gallons of water each year. That is a lot of water. If you are curious as to how much water you can collect at your home, here is a simple equation to use. Measure the square footage of the footprint of the roof area draining to your barrel. Google Earth can help you do this if you are unsure. Multiply that by 0.623. That is how many gallons you will collect with one inch of rain. Think back to the 1,000 square foot rooftop area again. With one inch of rain, you will collect 623 gallons of water. So a modest amount of rainfall can supply much or all of your outdoor watering needs. You will find your rain barrel will fill quickly with some of our intense rainfall events. Before you know it, you will want to add more rain barrels to your supply. There are many ways to use your rain barrel. You can use it to simply fill a watering can to water nearby potted plants. Or you can add a soaker hose or even a drip irrigation system to water your flower or vegetable beds. They even make solar power pumps that can help pressurize your water. You may also want to add some creative touches to your rain barrel. If you use a white barrel, you will want to paint it to reduce the amount of sunlight that can get through and cause algae growth inside your barrel. If you would like to paint your barrel, we recommend you lightly sand the surface with a 200 grit sandpaper and wipe the barrel down to remove any dust particles remaining. You can then simply apply a few coats of a spray paint label specifically for plastics or get creative with different designs and colors. Just be sure to use the same type of paint if using several colors. All latex or all oil based, for example. Otherwise, the different layers may peel off. We also recommend adding a layer of varnish to help protect your paint job. You will also want to consider raising your barrel up off the ground. This provides for more water pressure in your barrel and allows you to place your spigot as low as possible to access as much water as you can from your barrel. You can use simple cinder blocks or get more creative with materials and designs. Just remember to make sure you build your stand on a level and sturdy surface so the barrel will not slide off or fall off your stand causing damage to your home. And eventually you may want to add more rain barrels to your supply. You can easily connect them together at the bottom of the barrels so they are self-leveling and you can still drain from the one installed spigot on your first barrel. Remember these general tips when using a rain barrel. This is non-treated water so should not be used as a drinking water source. Remember to lightly sand and clean your barrel before painting. Don't mix paint types and use a final coat of varnish to protect your paint job. You can partially drain or completely disconnect your rain barrel if you live in an area susceptible to freezing. If you're using your rain barrel without gutters and downspouts, we will show you how to construct an open top barrel. You will collect rainwater through openings in the top of your barrel. You will want to make sure these openings are secure with window screening so mosquitoes are not able to breed inside the barrel. If you are having problems, you can add mosquito dunks to your rain barrel and they are available at most home improvement stores. And please make sure your barrel is secure. Remember, water is heavy. You want to make sure your barrel is set on a level surface and that there is no way for small children or pets to climb on or into your barrel. Now on to constructing your rain barrel. You can use any size barrel available to you. Typically 35 to 60 gallon drums work well. Make sure they were not used to store any harmful chemicals if you plan to use the rainwater for any edible plants. You will either be constructing an open top barrel, as seen on the left, or a closed system using a diverter in your downspout. If you have gutters and downspouts, it is highly recommended to keep your barrel as a closed system. It keeps your barrel much cleaner and is less susceptible to mosquitoes. An open top barrel is a great alternative for those who do not have gutters and downspouts on their home. You will collect water through holes drilled in the top of your barrel. You want to look around your home the next time it rains and note areas where rainwater is flowing off of your roof in a concentrated stream, usually off corners, peaks, or valleys in your roof line. Also note where the water hits the ground during different types of rainfall. Water will land in different spots with a light sprinkle versus a heavy downpour. You will want to mark somewhere in between to place your barrel so you can catch the most water. If you are using your barrel with gutters and downspouts, we will show you how to construct your barrel using a downspout diverter kit. This is a completely closed system and there is no need to cut off your downspout. There are a few other things you will want to consider before starting construction. First, visualize where you will place your barrel at your home. You will want to know which side of the downspout you will place it on and for an open top you will need to install an overflow hose. 
You want to picture which side you would like that on. Second, will you be raising your barrel off of the ground using a stand? It is highly recommended that you do raise your barrel at least two feet, especially if you plan to attach a hose. The added height will give you additional water pressure. And with a raised barrel, you can place the spigot as low as possible and be able to access all of the water. If you must keep your barrel on ground level, you might want to consider raising your spigot up a few inches from the bottom to allow access for a watering can or hose attachment. Remember, you will not have as much water pressure and will not be able to access all of the water in the barrel. The kits that we will be using in this demonstration are the Rain Recycle Rain Barrel Kits. You can purchase these online for around $30. These kits include all of the parts needed to construct a fully operational rain barrel. Even the whole saw bits are included. All you need is a drill. Now we will get started with constructing our rain barrel using these parts. Your kit includes one drill bit, three hole saw bits, one fill tube, one fill hose seal, one threaded rubber seal, one spigot, one flexi-fit diverter, two small tap screws that will secure your diverter to your downspout, and also a do not drink sticker if the rain barrel will be used in a public area. If you do not have gutters or downspouts and are constructing an open top barrel, you will need to purchase some window screening for the top and a bungee cord to secure it. A drill will also be needed for the construction of your rain barrel. In this video, we are using a 35 gallon plastic drum donated by the Coca-Cola company. Begin by laying the barrel on its side and have somebody hold the barrel while the holes are being drilled. The first hole saw you will use is the inch and a quarter. It is the smallest one in the kit. It is important to use the smallest bit, otherwise your parts will not fit. Unscrew the retaining nut from the bit and slide the hole saw onto the bottom. Then and tighten the retaining nut. Slide the bit into your drill and lock it in. Set your drill on the highest torque setting to allow it to grab the plastic easier, but be prepared to hold on to the drill with two hands when the hole saw makes contact with the plastic. Next, you will cut your spigot hole. Measure two and a half inches up from the bottom of the barrel. You want to leave some space at the bottom of the barrel to allow debris and organic matter to collect. If you will be installing your barrel at ground level and not on a raised platform, you may want to consider drilling this hole a little higher, allowing access for a watering can or hose attachment. Line the drill bit up with your mark and carefully drill your first hole. Next, we will drill the hole for the fill tube. This hole is where you will attach your barrel to your downspout or where your overflow will be if making an open top barrel. Rotate the barrel 90 degrees to either side from the spigot hole. Again, measure and mark two and a half inches down from the top of the barrel. For this hole, you will want to use the inch and a half or medium size hole saw. Again, make sure you're using the correct size so your parts will fit. Line the drill bit up with your mark and carefully drill your hole. Next, you will install the threaded rubber seal. It is easy to bend into a C shape and insert into the hole. Use your finger to expand the seal evenly around the hole. Next, thread your spigot into the seal. Now install the non-threaded fill hose seal in the same way. This is how it should look so far. Next drill the hole in your downspout. Typically there are two different sizes of downspout available. Two inch by three inch or three inch by four inch. It is very important to measure your downspout before drilling your hole because the diverter will only work on the 3 inch side. This may be the front or side of your downspout depending on the size you have. 
If you're planning on using a stand, make sure your barrel is placed on that stand before marking your downspout. Then, using a ruler, or a level if it is far away, mark your downspout level with the opening for the fill tube. Then mark the center of your downspout at that height. You will now use the largest hole saw in your kit to drill the hole in the downspout. Be patient and carefully drill the hole in your downspout. Be sure to wear proper eye and hand protection for the remaining steps. Next, install the FlexiFit diverter into your downspout. This can be easily done by manipulating the rubber of the FlexiFit diverter and pressing it into the downspout. You can secure the diverter with the included tap screws if necessary. You can also add additional caulking to the diverter if you experience any leaks. You will now install the fill tube that connects the downspout to the barrel. It is a good idea to spread lotion on each end of the tube to avoid compromising the seal at each end. The fill tube is expandable if you need additional length. This is how it should look once installed. If you are constructing an open top barrel, you will need to drill a few holes in the top of your barrel to collect water. You can use the medium or large hole saw included in your kit to do this. If your barrel comes with plugs, like this one, remove the plugs for two additional holes. You'll want to cover these holes with window screening so mosquitoes, other insects, and debris cannot get inside the barrel. The screen can be easily secured with a bungee cord. The fill tube will act as an overflow so water does not sit flush with the top of the barrel which will prevent mosquitoes from breeding in the barrel. Simply install the fill tube on the barrel and expand the tube towards an area you want overflow water to reach. You can purchase longer sections of hose if you prefer. It is the same diameter as bilge pump hose sold at marine stores. You may also want to place a small piece of window screening on the end of the hose to help with mosquito control. This is how your open top barrel should look when finished. Congratulations, you have now built your very own rain barrel.